Welcome back, FPC Scott. We're continuing our Bible study in the book of Romans. Today we're going to pick up at Romans 1 and 25. In the King, King James Version, 1 and 25 would read, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. That same verse in the complete Jewish Bible would read, they have exchanged the truth of God for falsehood by worshiping and serving created things rather than the creator. Praised be he forever. Amen. So this verse is repeating what Paul has already stated in verse 23. So he's repeating what he's already said, but using different words. So he's telling the church in Rome in this letter, look, I've already told you this, but I'm going to tell you again using different words. And this would mean that Paul is stressing or he's emphasizing just how important it is what he's trying to get across. He wants this to sink into their minds. He wants it to get their attention. He wants it to, to take root in their soul. So that very first phrase says, who changed? So this is the same word change that we looked at at a previous podcast. And we can see that when we read this same scripture in the complete Jewish Bible, that that word changed means exchanged. So they have exchanged truth for a lie. You cannot change the truth into a lie. The truth is the truth, but you can exchange it or you can get something else for it or you can trade in the truth for a lie. That word lie translates to mean a falsehood. The root word in the Greek is pseudos, which means not actually, but having the appearance of. So the lie appears to be the truth. Pseudos can also mean to pretend. The lie pretended to be the truth. It can also mean trying to be. The lie tried to be the truth. And there are many lies that are being taught in churches today. Lies that pretend to be the truth, lies that appear to be the truth, but they are still lies. These are lies that are false doctrines that are being taught as the truth. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3 and 4, it says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. So it was happening during the time that Paul was penning this letter, but it's also happening today. People want to hear a lie rather than a truth. That phrase will not endure means people won't tolerate sound or wholesome instruction but have itching ears for something pleasing or something gratifying, something that the flesh wants to hear. Ears wanted to hear something to suit their own desires. So going back to Romans 1 and 25, that phrase changed the truth of God into a lie. So the truth of God is not only the truth concerning God, but it is also God's truth concerning all things, including us, mankind. This truth is that we are creations of God. We are creatures of God, and we can only find true fulfillment when we worship and serve the Creator, our God. The creation was made to worship the Creator. Matthew 4 and 10 says, then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, that thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Our fulfillment comes when we worship God. But in the place of true worship, the Romans have now decided to worship idols. And in Scripture, we can find where idols are referred to as lies because they don't represent the true God. Isaiah 44 and 20 says, He feedeth on ashes. A deceived heart hath turned him aside, 
that he cannot deliver his soul, nor say, is there any lie in my right hand? That last phrase in the contemporary English version would read, don't they realize that the idols they hold in their hands are not really God's? The New Living Translation would also use the word idol. Jeremiah 10 and 14 says, every man is brutish in his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image for his molten image is falsehood. There is no breath in them. Molten image is falsehood. Their idol is a lie. So Paul is telling the church at Rome, you have exchanged the truth of the one true God for an idol. They knew God, but they put idols in his place. Who changed the truth of God? That phrase, the truth of God, is a Hebrew phrase that would mean the true God. The creature, this means created things, the sun, the moon, the animals, all of the created things which we talked about in the previous podcast, that they were forming into idols. They were making idols made in the image of man. They were making idols made in the image of crawling creatures and in the four-legged creatures. And now Paul is expanding this meaning to say anything that was created by God is now being worshipped and served more than the creator, the one true God. Served in the Greek translates to mean worship. So this portion of the scripture could be read and worshiped and worshiped the creation more than the true God. So again, there's repetition that Paul is using, is putting an emphasis that is being placed on what he is saying, that we are to worship God and God alone. The next phrase in that scripture says, who is blessed forever? The Jews would often use a phrase of praise when the name of God was mentioned. And we see where Paul did it here in the book of Romans, just as he did in his letter to the church at Corinth. 2 Corinthians 11 and 31 says, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. So it was common practice And they did this to preserve respect for the name of God when they would say, who is blessed forever, or in Corinthians, who is blessed forevermore. The last word of that verse is amen. This is a Hebrew word. It is used to strongly affirm what is being said. It can translate to mean, so let it be. It places approval on what has just been stated. So verse 25 is a repeat of what was the source and the cause of the sin that was present in Rome, idol worship, worshiping anything other than God. Romans 1 and 26 says, For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. That same scripture in the Living Bible would read, that is why God let go of them and let them do all these evil things so that even their women turned against God's natural plan for them and indulged in sex sin with each other. So the worship of idols has now led to other sin. The worship of idols has now led to all types of impurity. And it's the same today. When people began to worship idols instead of worshiping the true God, it leads to other things, sin, immorality, impurity. And it's not hard to understand how the move from idol worship to immorality took place if you look at the idols that the Romans were worshiping. Zeus was said to have committed adultery many times while he was married to Hera, the queen of the gods. Aphrodite, while married to another god, committed adultery. 
Aphrodite was also the patron goddess of prostitutes. They were worshiping these idols, these gods with little Gs that were thought to behave like this, taking part in all types of sexual perversion. So it's really not surprising that they behaved like the ones that they worshiped. At some point, someone created these gods, these idols, and what they did was they took the sin that they were committing and they made them into an attribute of the gods so that they could be justified in their behavior. Well, I'm acting like the gods that we serve. And then as time goes on, the people coming up, the next generation, would be serving gods that were given these attributes. So if they are seeing their gods doing these things and are acceptable, then they think it's acceptable to behave that way. But if we look at it from our standpoint and we worship the one true God, when we look at his attributes, then those are the attributes that we should also take on, such as love, such as kindness, such as mercy. So whatever you're worshiping, you will take on the attributes of that particular object of worship. So if you're worshiping God, your attributes should reflect those attributes of God. Just as when they are worshiping Zeus and Aphrodite and all of these goddesses and gods, they are taking on the attributes of those gods. Scripture says in 1 Peter 1 and 16, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. So scripture tells us, be like him, be holy like him. We are to imitate his behavior. God is holy, we are to be holy. So when people start worshiping idols, they want to be like their idol. When people start worshiping the one true God, they should have a desire to be like the one true God in his holiness, in his love, and in his mercy. That is why it's a very small step from idolatry to immorality. We imitate what we worship. In 2024, we don't have these little stone idols or Greek mythology idols that we worship, but there are many other things that people worship that are not God. Hollywood. People worship Hollywood. They worship the actors and the actresses in Hollywood, and then they become like them, trying to imitate their lifestyles. And this same thing is happening in Rome. Again, I find it hard to not see 2024 when studying what's happening in Rome in 57 AD. What we filled our mind with, what we fill our time with, what we fill our heart with is what we become. Deuteronomy 6 and 13 says, Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God and serve him, and shall swear by his name. So, as I mentioned just a little earlier, serve means worship, and we can see this in the translation of the New American Standard Bible. It says, ye shall fear only the Lord your God, and ye shall worship him, and swear by his name. Worship God, and be holy. Worship idols, and act like they act. It's all about the choices we make and the lifestyle that we choose. Again, we worship God, we take on the attributes of God, and we want to be holy as he is holy. Or you can worship an idol, and you begin to take on the attributes of the idol. You begin to act like they act. That is why people imitate what they see in Hollywood. They imitate what these actors and actresses are doing because they have decided that they're going to worship these idols in Hollywood instead of worshiping and serving the one true God. So scripture in Deuteronomy says, you shall fear 
only the Lord your God. That next phrase says vile affections. It means shameful lust. It means passions of disgrace or disgraceful desires. There are still many pagan writings today that record that these sins were known and were practiced extensively. So there are still some writings that we can reference that were written during these times by the pagans that will tell us that these sins were known and very predominant at this time. That phrase, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Romans 1 and 26 in the Living Bible translation makes it plain enough of exactly what Paul was referring to. That is why God let go of them and let them do all these evil things so that even their women turned against God's natural plan for them and indulged in sex sin with each other. <laughs> A small step from idol worship to immorality. Worship God, not immoral idols. Romans 1 and 27 says, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meat, M-E-E-T. That very first phrase, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. Homosexuality was actually very common among the Greek men. Again, they worshiped idols who acted in this same manner. Apollo, Ares, Athena, Zeus, and many other mythical gods were have said to have been engaged in homosexual behaviors. The people act like the ones that they worship. The next phrase says, and receiving in themselves. Bourne's notes commentary states, and I quote, the meaning of this doubtless is that the effect of such base and unnatural passions was to enfeeble the body, to produce premature old age, disease, decay, and an early death. So Barnes is saying that engaging in homosexual activities weakened the physical body. It made men age quicker than normal. It caused diseases. It caused the body to rot and led to a premature or early death. So historians do not believe that Paul chose these sins to cause controversy with the audience that he was writing to because the Jewish and the Roman Christian readers would have both agreed with him that both idolatry and homosexual behavior was sins. But what many writers conclude is that Paul used these sins to set the stage for the sins that he would be addressing later in chapter one, the sins that were less often publicly condemned. It was like Paul saying, look at all of these sins, idolatry, homosexuality. Look at all these sins that everyone who was reading the letter would have agreed were wrong. So that Paul could come back later and say, well, what about these sins that you don't think are as bad or as wrong as those? Romans 1 and 28 and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. The first phrase, and even as they did not like. Once again, it's repetition. Paul is stating that the real source allowing for this sinful behavior was because they did not choose to acknowledge God. It was not because they could not but because they chose not. 
They chose not to acknowledge God, and they chose to follow their own passion and their own lusts and to follow after the attributes that they have assigned to their gods. To retain God in their knowledge. It means to think of God, to serve him, and to adore him. The word knowledge here means full knowledge of God. In other words, they put God out of their minds. That word knowledge in the Greek also means recognition. And how are you going to recognize the voice of God if you don't spend time with him? That's why it's very important to have a daily prayer life. That's why daily Bible reading and studying is important because it's important to keep our mind focused on God, to keep our mind fixed on God. Because if you are focused and fixed on God, then you will keep a full knowledge of God. And this was the first step in their sin. It was not that God caused them to sin or that God did not give them knowledge, but it is because they turned their back on him and began to worship the idols. They did not search to retain God in their knowledge. 2 Timothy 2 and 15 in the Living Bible says, Work hard so God can say to you, well done. Be a good workman, one who does not need to be ashamed when God examines your work. Know what his word says and means. Know what his word says and means. Search the scripture. Study the scripture to gain knowledge and to retain knowledge. The next phrase is to a reprobate mind. The people did not choose to retain God, so they gave, he gave them up to a dis, disapproved or a rejected mind. It can also mean a depraved mind, a mind that cannot make the right decisions. They could not make the right decisions because they chose not to continue in the knowledge of God which is our guide to make the right decisions. So God has given them a perverted mind, meaning a mind which can't choose anything that is right. The literal translation would read like this, as they thought fit to cast out the acknowledgement of God, God gave them over to an outcast mind. It was God removing their conscience so that they had no remorse, they had no regret, they had no guilt, and they had no shame for their behavior. So as a consequence of their vile passion and their determination to forget God, God left them to a state of mind which was evil. A reprobate mind can also be translated to mean to an unsearching or undiscerning mind. We should have a mind that desires to search the scripture, to discern the scripture. You would think that when people begin to feel the consequences or the effects of sin, that they would repent and that they would seek God. But what we find in the book of Romans is just the opposite. When God gave them over to a reparate mind, they could only become worse. They did not even want to retain the knowledge of God in their their mind, which are not convenient, which are not fit or proper, which are disgraceful and shameful. Paul is referring to those things which he's going to address in the remainder of chapter 1. So what is happening in Rome, Paul is describing in chapter 1, verse 28, It wasn't something new that God has been dealing with. It was 627 B.C. when Jeremiah penned these words. And I'll read it from the New Living Translation, Jeremiah 2 and 5. This is what the Lord says. What did your ancestors find wrong with me that led them to stray so far from me? They worshipped worthless idols only to become worthless themselves. So Israel's faithfulness didn't last. They did not retain the knowledge of God, and they began to worship idols. It was 57 AD when Paul penned these words, Romans 1 and 28. 
And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. So approximately 700 years later, and we see a very similar situation happening in Rome where Jeremiah is talking about. And here in 2024, 1,300 years have elapsed and history is once again repeating itself. So this looks like a good place to end this week's Bible study. And I close with a quote from Mark Twain. It is not worthwhile to try to keep history from repeating itself for man's character will always make the preventing of the repetitions impossible. Well, how do you change your character? You retain the knowledge of God. God bless you and see you next week.